All right, <laughs> welcome. <clears throat> so here's a very common uh, fraction misconception that uh, students get. So they want to add one or one third plus one six. Now remember, the third is going to tell me I'm going to break my fraction into three separate parts, and six means I'm going to represent it into six equal parts. Right? That's somewhere close to being six equal parts. So my one third will be this bar, and then my one six is going to be one part out of these six. Now what a lot of students will do is there's a kind of two uh, misconceptions. One thing is they'll pick, they'll say, oh, well, one plus one, obviously it's going to be two, right? Well, here's the problem. Is that going to be two sixths or is it two thirds? Because two sixths looks like this and two thirds would be that tall, right? Well, think about it. If I'm going to add this bar on top of this bar, right, you guys can see that this one is only as high as here. So if I was going to add that same height, I need to have a fraction that's only going to be this high. So how am I going to you know, determine how to find you know, where this mark is right here? Well, and the answer is I need to find a different denominator. And because I can't break my fraction into thirds and then add it to a fraction in six and then see and then add them together and get the same mark because you notice that the answer is not between either one of those intervals. So what I'm going to do actually, it is actually between one of those intervals. It's, it could actually be broken down into six, but I want to make sure that you guys see, I'll show you the example how to find this out and you'll see why it works for six, but it didn't work for the two for the thirds. So what I'm going to do is I need to find the common denominator between 3 and 6. And what you quickly notice is this 3 goes into 6. So therefore, if I can get my 3 to be a 6, I can add these two fractions up. That's kind of the reason why I don't need to change this. You can see that this, this bar broken up into 6 will actually help us yield the answer. So anyways, going back to adding these two fractions, to get 3 to be a 6, I need to multiply by 2. You need, to multiply, you need to make sure you multiply by 2 on the top and bottom to keep your fraction equivalent. Therefore, 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 times 3 is 6. Add that over to 1 sixth, and now what I have is 2 thirds, which is actually, I'm sorry, 2 sixths, which 1, 2, plus 1 sixth equals 1 sixth equals 3 sixths. And the other thing, when we're talking about equivalent fractions, just to let you know, if you guys will notice, that these two are equal to each other. So we have one half and one half. So three six equals one half. It's just very important, ladies and gentlemen, when you're dealing with improper or when dealing with fractions mixed un unlike denominators, to get your denominators to be the same.